What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Linux running on the all new ROG Xbox Ally. And recently in the channel, I posted a video taking a look at Linux running on the ROG Xbox Ally X. That one has the more powerful APU, it's the AMD Ryzen Z2 AI, and it does put down some really good performance with Linux installed. But since then, I had a lot of people asking about the lower end variant, the ROG Xbox Ally. And with this, we've got the AMD and with this, we've got the AMD Ryzen Z2A. I'll tell you, it's basically the same thing that we have over in the Steam Deck. So it's a Zen 2 based CPU with four cores, eight threads. And when it comes to the iGPU, it's got eight compute units and it's based on RDNA 2. The only real difference here is the fact that in the new ROG Xbox Ally, the CPU clocks up to 3.8 gigahertz instead of 3.5 like we have over in the Steam Deck. And the iGPU clocks up to 1800 megahertz instead of 1600. But straight off the bat, I'll tell you right now, if you're comparing the Steam Deck OLED to this, uh, the OLED display on the Steam Deck does look far superior and it's a bit bigger coming in at 7.4 inches. In order to get Linux up and running on the ROG Xbox Ally, I'm going to be using an operating system known as Bazite, and I'm sure a lot of you probably already know exactly what that is. I've tried several times to get official SteamOS installed, but unfortunately, we just can't get it to boot up on this chip yet. When it comes to the overall user interface performance, I mean, it's been really smooth, and right now I've got this connected to my game capture. We're at 1080, 120 hertz, just like the built-in screen on the ROG Xbox Ally. And with this device, we've got a couple extra buttons up front. Over on the right hand side, we've got a quick access menu for Armory Crate in Windows. But if we press it here, it's going to bring up our quick menu in Linux also. And I'll tell you, with Bazai installed, everything's working here. We've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, I've even got TDP control. Going down a bit to our performance, you can set this overlay up. Uh, it's got four cores, eight threads, just like the Steam Deck. And like I mentioned, it's basically the Steam Deck APU with a little bit of an overclock. HDR is supported outside of the built-in display, uh, half-rate shading. We can even change the TDP limit directly from here, up to 20 watts on the Ryzen Z2A because this is clocked at 3.8 gigahertz instead of 3.5 over on the Steam Deck. And the iGPU here clocks up to 1800 megahertz as opposed to the Steam Deck 1600. Scaling mode, I mean, everything's been working really well here. Actually, let me bring this down just a bit so we can see everything a little better. If we press the Armory Crate button on the device, it's gonna bring up our left-hand side menu. And I wanna show you, we'll go to Settings, System. We're on Bazite 42. And you can see we've got that AMD Ryzen Z2A up to 3.8, four cores, eight threads. And this has a total of 16 gigabytes of RAM. I've dedicated eight for the iGPU, so we've got eight for system, eight for the iGPU. And again, it's based on RDNA 2, just like the Steam Deck with eight compute units. And the final thing I wanna show you is something that comes installed with Bazai on handhelds. The way I've got this set up is if I press my Xbox button, it's gonna bring it up over on the right hand side. This is called handheld daemon. From here, we can change our TDP mode. So we've got a six watt mode for silent, 15 for performance, turbo at 20 and our custom with a little bit of a boost. And I do think it probably boosts up to around 24 watts if needed. We've got a fan curve that we can fully adjust. And as soon as this is working, I mean, you can adjust it from here. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, I just can't get RGB working on this one. Up at the top, if we press Y, we've got even more settings here. So we'll go all the way up to TDP. TDP mode, like we just saw. Fan curve. Extreme standby mode can be enabled or disabled. We've got some custom CPU settings. It's at auto right now, but if I go to balance, we can change our EPP mode from low, balance to high. And I've been leaving this at auto. GPU frequency can also be changed. You can set up a max limit, range, or fixed, all the way up to 1800 megahertz here. We've also got a charge limit on that battery, and there's a few more. I mean, you can update from here, uh, controller support, general updates, bug report, shortcuts, settings. On the day that Asus and Xbox launched this, you could actually install Bazai and it would work. You do have to update to the beta channel, but, but yeah, I mean, you can get Linux up and running on this device for sure. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some game testing. I'm really interested to see what this thing's gonna do. 
and we'll go with Cyberpunk 2077. So first things first here, with Cyberpunk 2077, I wanted to see how this would perform just like we set it up on the Steam Deck. Well, out of the box with the Steam Deck. Basically, we're using the Steam Deck preset, and this will lock it down at 30 FPS. I'm at 720p because we do have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio display. But if you check our graphics out, Steam Deck, FSR is set to balanced. Video, 720p, and we're locked down. Just want to see if we can get a continuous 30 out of it and I kind of expect it should run pretty decently. We're at a 20 watt TDP right now, and yeah, not too bad. Even on the Steam Deck, get a few dips here and there with it locked at 30, but uh, overall, yeah, it should be pretty playable like this, and I know for a fact that on the Steam Deck, with this preset here running the in-game benchmark with an unlocked frame rate, we can average 42 to 43 FPS. So what I wanna do now is unlock the frame rate, See how high it takes us. So we'll go into the settings here. We'll just turn the maximum FPS off. Okay, not too bad. It's not a lot more than 42 to 43 FPS. Overall, not horrible, but I do think we might be able to get a little more out of this. Now, when it comes to the Ryzen Z2A, it's not much more powerful than the Steam Deck's APU. Remember, we've got a 300 megahertz overclock on the CPU, so up to 3.8 instead of 3.5, and a 200 megahertz overclock on the iGPU. So instead of 1600 megahertz, this will do up to 1800 megahertz. It does make a little bit of a difference. Of course, we did need a little more wattage to hit that. So we're at 20 instead of 15, like on the Steam Deck. But I think we might be able to get a little more out of this. So I'm going to take the resolution up because with the ROG Xbox Ally, we've got a 1080p display instead of an 800p display like over on the Steam Deck. So I'm going to go to settings here and we're going to take it up to, let's do 900p at first. So 1600 by 900. And I think that's going to be about the extent there. Yeah, this is probably where we would have to lock it back down to 30 with this chipset. Actually, not too bad. With what I'm seeing right now, around 33 to 37 FPS, we could probably turn that frame limiter back on to 30 and run this at 1080 with that Steam Deck preset. Or we could take the settings down and just get a lot more out of it. But I mean, it's definitely keeping up with what the Steam Deck's put now. I was really hoping for a big jump, but I kind of didn't expect it knowing what kind of specs we have here. And just to kind of give you an idea of the performance difference here, using the built-in benchmark for Cyberpunk 2077, over on the left-hand side, we've got the Steam Deck OLED. We're using the same exact settings here, but the Steam Deck is at 15 watts because that's all we can get up to. Over on the right hand side, we've got the ROG Xbox Ally at a 20 watt TDP. And this was a new run with the game version 2.31. Looks like the Steam Deck did gain a bit from older versions. We're up to 47.73 FPS on average. And the ROG Xbox Ally, 51.96. So a little gain there, not as much as I was hoping for. And it will kind of differ per game. But yeah, I mean, you can see that it is at least adding a little here. Now I'm moving over to some real world gaming with the ROG Xbox Ally and Linux. We've got The Witcher 3 using the Steam Deck preset, but instead of 800p, we're at 900. So 1600 by 900. Looking good, we're over that 60 mark, and I really thought we'd see decent performance with this game for sure. Elden Ring, low settings, 720p. I was not expecting to get 60 FPS with this setup here with this game. Uh, I've tested this quite a bit on APUs, and it's kind of hit or miss in Windows and Linux. I wanted to throw at least one fighting game in here, so I went with Mortal Kombat 1. 720p, low, FSR set to balance, 20 watt CDP with all the games that we're testing. Right there on the edge, just needs a little bit more to hit that 60 mark.
And the last one we have here is Doom the Dark Ages, and recently we got the handheld preset, so it's kind of handheld optimized right now. It actually feels really nice on this display. Remember, we've got a variable refresh rate display. Not doing 60 with this handheld preset, FSR set the balance. Either way, I mean, I don't mind playing it like this. It actually does feel really nice on this screen. Now I wanted to take a look at some battery life, and I'm sure we'll get some more optimizations, but I don't know how much more they can do because we're already seeing some really good battery life out of this thing with Bazai installed. We're at that 6 watt TDP preset through handheld daemon, Silksong 720p, and if you take a look right here, I know it might be a bit hard to see, we're only pulling 7.7 .7 watts in total from the battery. And of course, RGB is off right now. Screen brightness is at 50%. And going down to something a bit easier to run, it actually dropped down to 6.8 watts in total with Shredder's Revenge. At a 15 watt TDP, it does jump up a bit. And remember, I mean, you're going to match the Steam Deck performance at 15 watts with this, especially with a game like Cyberpunk. Only pulling 23 watts in total from the battery. And with the Xbox Ally set at a sustained 20 watt TDP, that jumps up to a little under 30 watts in total. We've got a 60 watt hour battery with this thing, running Bazai OS screen brightness set to 50%, 6 watt indie gaming and 2D gaming, almost 9 hours of runtime, AAA gaming at a 15 watt TDP, around 2 hours and 30 minutes, and at a 20 watt TDP, we're going to see around 2 hours of runtime out of this thing. As it stands right now, yeah, you can get Linux up and running on the all-new ROG Xbox Ally. But Microsoft's new full-screen experience for handhelds is coming along quite nicely, and it does work pretty well on this device. If you're interested in checking out the initial video I did uh, running Windows on this, I'll leave a link in the description. But I had people asking about this, and I figured I'd make a video. I'm going to keep an eye out for official SteamOS support for this device. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, it'd be pretty cool if you could hit that like button or think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.